Hello everyone, Derek Diablo, Diablo TV here. In my new series on extreme music genres and music genres that have extremist followings, this is episode two. In episode one, I covered black metal and national sources black metal per request in my comments for my viewers. And uh, it's a fascinating subject and one that I have a lot of knowledge on. And anybody who wants to talk about combating extremism and perhaps de-radicalizing those who have been on an extremist path. I was I used to fight against far-right extremists. I became a left far-left extremist. And the music has a lot to do with it. So then it gets into a bigger question. You know, anybody would say, well, if there's Nazi music, it should be banned. You know, because, well, why? Well, because it's going to influence them. And then, well, then why isn't... So then music does influence people. So then violent music does influence... Violent mu music, movies, books do influence people, right? So then why are some banned, but other ones not banned? It's a big question. It's either that music influences people to become extremists, or it doesn't. And if it does, then all forms of extremist music should be banned. I don't believe that. I believe in freedom of speech and artistic freedom. Uh, so there's, it's going to get quite interesting for some of the genres I intend to bring out and discuss for these educational purposes and attempting to combat extremism. And the most significant to me out there, out of any genre, and which would be to me the thrust of this entire series, although there's others that need to be discussed, is none other than RAC, Rock Against Communism. A.K. White Power Rock and Roll. Now, when it comes to this genre, in the previous episode, I talked about black metal, National Socialist black metal, that I don't listen to it. I don't like it. Not because necessarily the messages. I listen to black power music, white power music, satanic, Christian. I listen to anything I like. It's art. I don't put my personal beliefs in the way of appreciating art. Otherwise, I, would be, I have my, a very a unique way of looking at things and a, my own my own perspectives and nobody else thinks quite like I do otherwise would, if that was the case I wouldn't be able to listen to any music except my own so then RAC white power rock and roll I do listen to it I do listen to it and uh, I like a lot of it uh, I'm against it and it, it and it's interesting how that began I'm an anti-racist skinhead so original US militant anti-racist movement beginning in 1987 Came skinhead from listening to the punk, then listened to hardcore oi. And it was very common in those times for anti racist skinheads to listen to white power music. Uh, it's still common among some. However, I feel in my community I broke that tradition. The older lads that brought me, that I was under in the anti racist skinhead movement from down here, it was a common thing. We'd, all, they'd, we'd listen to it. Basically, the policy that came out before me and that I enforced is uh, South Florida zero tolerance, no Nazis allowed, and we went to war for it and succeeded, and then part of it had to do with no white power music shirts or singing it in a show or playing it in the car at a show. You could listen to it in the privacy of your own home, some people, and the older lads would put it on, and a lot of them had the albums and so forth, and so I became exposed to it, and I felt that, okay, well, I need to know thy enemy. So I initially was listening to it for the purpose of fighting those who listened to it and understanding what they thought. And when you hear Nazis, you know, you think of just the, the mean, evil sort of side of it. And I, I'll take it to Friedrich Nietzsche, so a very influential philosopher on me, especially when I was younger. And he has that famous quote. He says, be careful when you go chasing monsters that you don't become a monster in the process and when you gaze into the abyss long enough the abyss begins to gaze back and uh, I found this in the sense that screwdriver it starts with screwdriver Ian Stewart Donaldson the late Ian Stewart Donaldson screwdriver S-K-R-E-W-R-I-V-E-R -E Banned, you know, you mean, you mean they're banned. You're not going to be able to buy that anywhere, and it's but it's one of the most influential bands in all of punk and oi and everything else. Uh, I don't want people listening to it. I listen to it personally, and going back to that Nietzsche quote, 
you know, people would think that Nazi music would be evil, more like the National Socialist black metal, let's say. People would think that that's what it would be, but it's not. Not really. Uh, the RAC music, Rock Against Communism, White Power Rock and Roll, began as a form of punk oi with screwdriver and related bands that I'll, I'll go into. But it's be it became, through the, the, the career of screwdriver, it became bigger. It became a bigger genre. And it, so then you'd say from the original screwdriver, and then there people will go into the comment, and the comments below should be interesting. Uh, all screwed up. That's their first album. And they weren't Nazis at the time. And then there's a bigger conversation. It goes into the Ian Stewart Donaldson. And people say, oh, he's a failed blues man. But the fact is, he was in the blues, in the black music, really. And you can hear it, obviously, and the man had soul. Say it, say it if you want to say it. Some people think his voice is annoying, but for me, the man had soul. And what led? Screwdriver didn't come out of nowhere. It was an early punk band, which people don't want to get, you know, don't want to talk about it, but it was early. I want to say they're back in 76 or something. They're like early with Sex Pistols and everything. And they weren't racist overtly in their music. Then in time, they broke up and he joined the National Front and they, he reformed Screwdriver with the intention of creating the white power rock and roll and using it as a weaponized form of music, let's say. But what led to that? There's one person, Eric Clapton. And it's, I'm seeing it documented a little more. I've known this for a long time. Interesting, he gets a pass. But, Ian, but Eric Clapton went, was on stage in, in England and obviously he's one of the people looked at as a you know, a curator of the black music and the and the blues and the electric blues that had come out. And he sat on stage. This is famous. This has been talked about. But he gets a pass. and Nobody's going to ban his music. He started it. He started Rock Against Communism, White Power Rock and Roll, basically, because he got on stage and he went into a racist tirade and he was encouraging his musical followers, which were vast, to join the National Front. And he was talking about Enoch Powell, and the famous Rivers of Blood speech. So lo and behold, Ian Stewart Donaldson goes and joins the National Front and takes credence to all that and creates this genre of white power rock and roll. It all goes back to, from, from Ian Stewart to Eric Clapton. Eric Clapton is the godfather of white power rock and roll. With that being said, with Screwdriver's history, they start with the punk and the oi, let's say, but uh, the OI became known as more of an anti-racist, or let's say it was, it was of our type of genre. It, uh, there was Nazi OI, but they made, their own, they made their own genre. And in so doing, in an effort to separate themselves from us, but or more organically, the music itself, through Screwdriver leading the charge, you, you start getting into the ballads, you know, and it's... It's not what you think it's going to be. As I was saying, you, you people would think Nazi music is going to be real aggressive. But uh, if you listen to Screwdriver, I'm not saying you should. Because you open that Pandora's box, you begin looking into the abyss. What happened with me is that I was expecting, you know, and there is a lot of aggressive white power music, aggressive RAC music, hateful type of music that you would imagine. And Screwdriver has some of those sorts of songs too, even though the music is has more of almost a country western has a more clean guitar type of sound. It's soul influenced. Another way you could say it, but then they have these ballads. You know, the snow fell. Tomorrow belongs to me, which was taken for the movie Cabaret, but and there's others. And it, it's uh this is the danger of looking into it and gazing into the abyss. Because you start seeing some of the beauty and you start understanding the other side of, of what it means to them and fighting for their people in their mind and so forth. Uh, so, Screwdriver, they, uh, they get into more country and western type of stuff, then you have this Viking influence. So, to understand RAC music, you begin and end with Screwdriver, but it, it, they're not the only band. So then let's say, what are the best bands? Uh, Screwdriver, Brutal Attack, Ken McClellan, father of uh, Boneface, Kent McClellan, Brutal Attack, no Remorse, uh, Skullhead, I would say those are their top four bands. They have other bands, uh, UK-based bands. Then you get to America, and you have REC bands, but but also the, the genre gets bigger than you have with like the REC, the horrorcore, hate core is what they call it. 
So their hardcore version, then Bound for Glory, uh, that uh, band from Twin Cities, St. Paul, that would probably be their, their best band. And they have loads of bands. And I could, I could sit here and name lots of them that I've listened to or heard over the years. You know, from Rahoa, Angry Aryans, Nordic Thunder, Blue Eyed Devils, Max Resist. I could go on and on. And uh, it's not hard to look into this genre. Although nobody's allowed to sell it, it's illegal, let's say, in, in, in Europe, in, in England, Germany. It's illegal to, to manufacture this music. Because it's, it's Nazi propaganda, let's say. Interesting that other sorts of, of extreme propaganda on other sides are, 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 they can do as they wish, which I don't necessarily think is fair, but it's not for me to decide, you know. Uh, I can give my opinion, and I can try to help people understand each other. And people that are into extremism on all sides, for the mainstream media to not explore this side of it, they're misleading the public and they don't know themselves the mainstream media don't know who screwdriver is they look at nazism as they think from you know directly from adolf hitler down to these people not quite <laughs> it started the music you start listening to punk and look with punk you know look at the history of punk sex pistols they were swastikas Susie sue sid vicious everybody whoa everybody blows it off why do they get to wear sex swastikas and they have anti-semitic song belson was a gas that's an anti-Semitic song, straight up. Make, talking about, you know, Holocaust, making jo a, a comical song about it. But just like Eric Clapton get it passed, Sex Pistols get it pass. And when you have a bunch of punk rockers wearing swastikas to be shock value, then you got Eric Clapton instructing his supporters to join the National Front and support Enoch Powell. Then you got Ian Stewart sitting around, okay, well, now we'll wear, Screw we'll wear swastikas. And be real with it. So, uh, it's all a, a bit of a twisted tale. I'll leave it there for now. Open the discussion up. Uh, I don't find myself listening to to RAC music very much uh, at, at this point. But in exploring it and finding it, I did listen to it quite a bit. And I, I know a lot of it. And I have a, good, a big collection of it, let's say. And uh, some of it's pretty good. You know, I'm not going to say it's not. Um, when I was more extreme minded and I was you know thinking more about the, the radical politics and so forth I was more attracted uh, to hearing this stuff because it's the enemy but the, the, the hatred and the and the aggression that's contained with it and the subject matter and and also from from listening to it you learn more about history like there's a a really good band Legion of St. George then it gets to this other this other part, you have overtly Nazi bands, then you have other bands that that are in the RAC genre, but they don't exactly say Nazi things, but then if you look at Legion of St. George, well, okay, I heard that name, and I knew that they were RAC band, and some of their songs are good, but then I I ended up having, I researched it, and Legion of St. George was like an English Nazi division, so, and they have some werewolf, and then the werewolves made me look deeper into and then, so there's Operation Werewolf, which was, once Nazis were defeated, they, they were doing clandestine stuff to kill all the allied occu occupiers, let's say. But then there's something older, the Werwolfen, the werewolves, country boys, like irregulars. And that goes into free corps. And that goes into the interwar period, which is currently what I study the most, which is not quite as much information and goes into the original German national Bolshevism, but, and the Volksangel. That, that symbol that's used by the Azov regiment in Ukraine, Boneface has a tattoo of it, uh, and this this original Verwolves was a irregular or paramilitary type of group, roving bands. Uh, to me, they're country boys, German country boys. So, so the Legion of Saint George, from listening to them, it turned me on to this other stuff, which is then historical, and. If we're going to make an effort to combat extremism, you can't only deal with the surface. You have to deal with the, the inner kernel or the nucleus that drives it. And whether people want to say it or not, Adolf Hitler was an artist. People are always a failed artist. Like uh, Ian Stewart, Donaldson, always a failed blues man. Well, that's an easy way to minimize it. 
But nonetheless, the man, Nagel Philipp, was, a, was an artist, and he had an artistic sort of vision for Germany and combining the best elements of ancient Greek and Roman and Spartan culture, and they were all obsessed with having the best art collection and looting, looting art and uh, The Rape of Europa. That's a great film that goes into it. So art was important to National Socialism, to Nazism, to Adolf Hitler, and so forth. And uh, this, this RAC, this screwdriver, is authentic Fourth Reich propaganda. Authentic. Uh, there is a lineage, let's say, they have. And before you can understand these people and try to do something about it to help or to de-escalate, you have to understand their mindset and their viewpoints. And you're not going to find it from watching demos and speeches and... You'll understand it much more clearly if you listen to their music, but uh, it's a bit like when I used to be into the Star Wars and the Sith Holocron. It's a good book that involves that and a, a young Obi Wan Kenobi, and um, you know there's the Sith Holocron, and there's only one guy in the Jedi, temp Jedi Temple who's who looks at it, you know, because it'll do something to your mind, and even the even the Jedi way can't stop you. It'll turn you Sith basically. And there, to use this uh, analogy, so you know, is listening to screwdriver and listening to RAC going to turn somebody into a Nazi? I don't think if they weren't predisposed to it, but uh, it'll definitely uh, influence you, and it will have an impact. All music does, all art does, if we embrace it and and learn to understand it and put ourselves in that in that thought process. So, you know, should it be banned? No, I don't think so. I believe in freedom of speech and freedom of art. Unless you're going to ban all extremists and all racist music. And if you do that, then uh, you know, there's an entire massive genre, which we'll get into, which is the world's biggest genre. You'd have to ban it because it has just, it has, it's, since it's more widespread, it has a bigger reach. And uh, I'll leave that for another one. RAC, Rock Against Communism, White Power Rock and Roll, Derek Diablo my attempt to better humanity and educate people on the dangers of extremism and understanding extremism also reaching across the aisle you know to find a common ground as uh, Daryl Lamont Jenkins has done and talked about extensively American Antifa organizer you know he made a television show about doing this very thing de-escalating neo-nazis and you can't come at them with aggression because they're prepared to fight uh, you have to find the common ground, and you know this screwdriver and this RAC music is something that a lot of us have in common. Skinhead movement, let's say. I've taught the younger people that came in after me, under me, not to listen to it. I didn't show it to them, so they don't listen to it and they don't know the songs. I was raised in a different generation where the anti-racist skinheads listen to it, and many still do, and. We don't know exactly how, you can't say how much influence they had. I'm not going to name bands, but a lot of bands that are anti-racist and f famous bands that we listen to, if you listen to Screwdriver, you can hear the influence. So uh, I'll leave it there for now in the comments. Open it up. Let's have it. Let's have uh, supporters and detractors alike. Cheers.